Hey everybody, I'm Josh. And I'm Rachel. And tonight we're fancy AF. Because <laughs> we yeah. are headed into Michael Mina's main restaurant. Um, it's his namesake. So it's just called Michael Mina. It's inside the Bellagio Conservatory. So you can see it right behind us. And it's just over here to the right. Yeah, we're super excited to try this one out. So we'll see you in there. Caviar parfait, chef insists a little sip to cleanse the palate first, and then the five layers you need to enjoy them all together. So use your knife to slice through and to include all the layers of the parfait. All right. Thank you. He did not. So we have the amber jacudo. It's topped with some fried caper, Meyer lemon, and hot chili oil, finished with crisp artichoke. Perfect. All right. First round. You're supposed to have a sip of the Grey Goose frozen vodka to cleanse your palate before you eat your caviar. <laughs> yep. Do you want some? Nope. I'm good. <laughs> Alright, so the caviar, you said cut all the way through and make sure you get all, all the layers. The fried artichokes on my dish look really... I'm, I'm intrigued by that. Oh. Wow. Alright. All five layers. It's freaking great. Is it good? Yeah, I'm gonna 
get you a bite. All right, so on the bottom layer, it is like a, it's like a fried potato. You did say potato cake. Yeah. Um, that crispy fried artichoke elevates this dish to a whole new level. It's so good. <laughs> Surprisingly good. I was not sure what to expect on that caviar. Yeah, there's a lot of flavors in there. And the little fried artichokes are just the best. Fancy. <laughs> so those are fried artichokes. Yeah. They seem like thinly fried potato chips. Yeah. I could eat them all day. Yeah. Like potato chips. It's so simple, but lots of flavors. Awesome. Go ahead. Fresh mint on the plate as well. Sesame oil that's been infused with scotch bonnet, rancho chili powder, and a little salt and pepper to finish the dish. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah, it is. If you enjoyed it as is, or on the toast points, either way is going to be great. Perfect. Thank you. All right. All right. Ahi tuna, tartar, and crispy spot prawns. Did you catch any of those sauces? Mango and then a coconut. And then that's some kind of, okay, before I go and eat that. You could. That is completely edible. It's kind of like a crispy prawn potato chip. Oh, okay. okay so pick it up, maybe dip it in a couple of the sauces. You, like you, got, you got the sweet sour mango sweet and the corn mango. pudding. And a little bit of the lime powder. It's lime and um, a little cardamom. Right? So a little bit of all of it. And a little bit of mint in that powder, right? So okay. just, you, and then just crunch the whole thing. It's absolutely delicious. Do you eat delicious. the tail? Pardon me? Do you eat the tail? Yeah. Um, no, not the very end tail. Okay. okay. So that part, yeah. The head and then the body part. Okay. okay. By the way, the bread, it is... It's the best bread I've ever had. I think so, too. I was yeah. actually saying, so this, this bread is complimentary. And it should be a $15 to $20 um, appetite. It's freaking awesome. Okay, he did say a little bit of everything, right? Yep. Mango, some, and the lime powder. Have you eaten that shrimp head before? Or a prawn head before? No. Here I we go. I don't know why he thinks I would have. <laughs> okay, it's the head. Like, is there eyes? Yeah. yeah. I can't see it. A little chewier than just regular shrimp. But otherwise, that's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so the tuna is it's beautiful. It is so uh, pretty. Both of these dishes. I would say beautiful tasty. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's just a very nice, simple, clean. Um, there's like a little bit of chili in it. There's um, a little fruit, some pine nuts. The sweet and sour mango sauce on here. And that, it just like, I can't say enough about this dish because it's just so elevated. It's so elegant. What I'm trying to convey is that I can't put into words how all this put together is. Like, it is so elegant and beautiful and tastes good. But I can't get any better descriptors than that. There we go. That's so good. It's like, it looks like a, like it's going to be a little bit heavier and uh, a thicker batter, but it's like, it's like straw. Mm -hmm. It is so thin. It's like the most shoestring fry that you've ever had. It's aromatic and it just starts with your eyes and you can smell it, you can taste it. That's some of the freshest tuna tartare I think I've ever had. It's got a kick to it though. There's some, there's a spice somewhere. Yeah, there's a little bit of chili powder in here. And this is just simple white bread. Toasted. All right, so my course is the filo crusted sole, and Rachel's is the potato, potato gnocchi. potato gnocchi and king crab, glazed king crab, right? Yeah. All right, looks delicious. You know um, how peas have a smell? Like you can, these are very fragrant peas. 
look like I've got a little bit of, of potato puree at the bottom. Mm. Yep. Those are fresh peas. Those are delicious. Like, I don't usually like peas. Is there some bite to them? Mm -hmm. That's why I like peas. Yeah. yeah, you gotta try just the peas part before you get started. Those are fresh. Yeah. Did you, like that's like oh that's good. I feel like I'm in a garden eating those peas. Yes. Yes. This is like a, just like a perfect piece of fried fish. Lightly battered, good and crispy. This is great. Yeah, the potato gnocchi is very fluffy. Very good. Uh, I love gnocchi, by the way. Yeah, you're, this is a bite I'm prepping for you. I'm super jealous that she got this course. It just smells so good. It's so fragrant. Okay, you ready? Yes. Yeah, he likes it. Yeah, I love it. It's just like, just enough bite to it. You know, it doesn't just like, it doesn't 100% just melt in your mouth, but it, it's got a little bit of chew. Yep. Uh, which is good. And like, all these flavors, they're not... They're not over the top. So it's one of those where like you want to take a little bit of time to like taste everything that's going into it. And I think that's the question. Yeah, it's not that there's so many flavors, it's just they're just so perfect together. Yes. That's that's the only way I can figure out how to describe it. Okay, I'm like crunch on your I'm making you a bite. Okay. Wow. That was too big of a bite. Ah. <laughs> wow. It's good, right? Yeah. It's a very light crust. Very light. But it's crispy. Uh -huh. if, if you ever watch those cooking shows and they're like, I want you to upscale something. <laughs> this is upscaled fish <laughs> Yes. I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it. Like, it is, it's super well done. I, I enjoy it. But that's kind of, that sounds terrible. Well, okay, so this is going to come off the same way, especially because I know how much uh, of a fan Josh is of milky. The fresh lima beans and peas make this bite. It would not be the same dish without it. The second bite I just took was the vegetables in yogi. It's a different bite, it, isn't it? It was actually better. Yeah. Yeah. And I love crab. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. But that, it's just something about that combination that really makes this dish stand out. It's good, guys. I've got lobster papai, lobster brandy cream sauce, seasoned vegetables, shaved burgundy truffles. Just put the crust in, mix and enjoy. Awesome. Thank you. Alright, this is lobster papai, and I just lost the top of it but you can see it's delicious looking oh my goodness you can see all the lobster the potatoes greens carrots yum 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 what do you got going on over here grilled octopus over a kimchi Pancake. Pancake, and then there's some kimchi on top as well. Alright, this round I was super excited for. It. This is why Josh got this tasting menu. Lobster pot pie. Yeah, and I got the grilled octopus. It's on a kimchi uh, pancake. pancake. I don't know why I'm struggling with that. Look at this. Look at that lobster piece. It's a huge claw. Let's start with the crust. I want all of this in one bite and I'm really struggling. Oh my god. This is so good. I think the star of this dish is a kimchi pancake. Ah. It's really good. Um, the octopus does have a nice char on it. And again, it's pretty, it's fragrant. This place, this place truly the dishes hit all of the right notes. Like they're everything. It's amazing. It, it's amazing. Wait, I want you to eat this. None. <laughs> a 
little bit more heat than I was expecting from the yeah. octopus. Um, you can tell it was from the grill. It's got a, a little bit of a crispy bite from the char. I think it's good. I like it. But, but Josh's lobster pot pie wins this round. <laughs> yeah. This lobster pot pie is amazing. That's pretty, that's really good. Yeah, this is definitely a standout. All right, this is the prime beef with foie gras and a potato cake. It has a very similar look to a filet, so it should be it your favorite. I'm hoping so. And then Rachel got the halibut. What else do you know about that? This is a corn coconut puree. Yummy. It looks so good. All right, main course is here. We got some beef and we got some halibut. Yummy. Yeah. This I was so good. I was telling Josh, there is few times that I can't describe something. But these dishes, I don't feel I'm describing them with enough justice because they're so good. You can tell that this is Michael Mina's signature restaurant because this stuff, it, it just speaks for itself. Like you have to taste this stuff to understand. That's why I'm struggling with words so bad. It has been amazing. Yes. Um, and if you've watched our videos, we did do a Bardot, which is a Michael Mina, and Strip and Egg, which is a Michael Mina. And we enjoy both. Yeah. We really do. Um, but this is another one. It really is. It is. All right, I'm doing quadra with the beef. This has a coconut corn, corn puree. I really can't taste the corn, but the coconut has a very strong flavor. And strong as in, it's a very good flavor to add with the halibut. It's a, it really complements it nicely. Good. All right, this beef. It's just a very simple, um, simply seasoned, but there's a good sauce with it. The foie gras melts in your mouth. It is like that heavy fat that you just want with anything that you're going for a rich flavor. That's what it is? Yes. Okay, we trade. Yeah. Oh. He's not lying. Like, you can taste the char, the little bit of char from the steak, but everything else just no. And the halibut, super fresh, super clean. The foam, I think, adds just a little, enough of a texture element. The vegetables have that little crisp, fresh taste. It's very simple but elegant presentation. It's it's not something over the top, you know, this ain't your black and seafood because it's about to turn. Yeah. I mean this is like this is pure great bites of seafood. And which this restaurant really does specialize in seafood. So I mean that's why you can tell most of our stuff has plus a seafood. seafood base. Yeah. All of these basically are smaller portions of main entrees that they have. Yeah. So what you're seeing, this is not the same size that you would get if you ordered a thing. Um, we actually just saw somebody next to us had the beef. And it's a larger portion. It is. A uh, larger portion of everything. But this is what happens when you do a tasting menu. You, you get so many smaller sizes. It's amazing. Yeah, because we're on course six. We have one more course. Yep. Seven courses. That is just like, unheard of. We would never order seven courses, I don't think. Mm, yeah, probably not. <laughs> I mean, depends. We may. That's true. At least not seven full size <laughs> That's true. Alright, well, we'll see you at dessert. All right, dessert time. So I got a couple chocolate chip cookies. One is double chocolate. The and uh, a root beer sorbet. Some root beer, a little bit of gold flex for some reason. But Edible that's a, straw. yeah. There's a root beer float for you. Yeah. And what do you got? I believe it's some. It's a panna cotta with strawberries, fresh strawberries. I believe there's rhubarb and then some kind of. 
I heard something about lemon too, oh, okay. which seems great. Yeah, it does. Lemon, seem great. rhubarb, strawberries, panna mm. cotta, which I think it, I'm assuming is vanilla like. Okay. But we'll see. I'm excited. Yeah. Alright, before we start dessert, I do want to let you know it's 10 p.m. We started dinner at 8. Okay. Our, our reservation was for 8 o'clock. So if you're going to look at doing something like this, it's going to take a while. And so, I mean, we're two hours in before we got dessert. So. I mean, I think if you have time constraints, you can probably try to do it, but make this your evening entertainment. That's what we're doing. Yeah, and he did ask if there was anything time-wise we needed to be paid attention to. And I will share my dessert with Josh, and he's not being stingy. I just do not like root beer at all. So I'm not sharing his dessert. <laughs> I'm not even going to try it. I don't have a problem with it, though. Not only that, but I don't like nuts in baked goods, and there's a walnut <laughs> chocolate chip cookie, so I'm not going to try that either. I know. I'm weird. I have a little bit of weird quirks about my food habits. Not this me. looks delicious. <laughs> It's so good because so the ice cream being root beer flavored and it's super creamy, delicious. Oh, the cookie's warm. I don't care. <laughs> Nuts do not belong in baked goods. I wonder if anybody else out there agrees with me because I don't believe nuts belong in baked goods. Comment down below. This is a very smooth, creamy panna cotta. The um, fruit is fresh. It's a very good palate. It is a great way to eat. It is not a heavy dessert at all. So the chocolate chocolate chip one, I don't think it's done. So if you want, I'll buy you that. Both of them are freshly made, warm. Who doesn't want a cookie right out of the oven? That's true. <laughs> warm cookies are the best. I had a strawberry and then rhubarb as well. The rhubarb is not sour. I'm used to, and I like rhubarb, especially strawberry rhubarb together. Yeah. Oh wow, that's a rich cookie. That chocolate chocolate chip. Mm -hmm. It's warm. Yeah. It's delicious. <laughs> if you're going for the very light palate cleansing style, go with the panna cotta. If you want something like rich and gooey gooey, yeah. go with the root beer float and cookies. That double chocolate chip one, it's so rich. Yes. But it is so tasty. That's a good one. Alright, well we're gonna ahead, go ahead and finish up these desserts. We'll see you afterwards. Alright, we just finished up. Two hours, 20 minutes <laughs> since our reservation started. What a meal. Oh man, next level. As I said earlier, uh, I can't even describe it. It's, it just hits all the notes. It was good. Yeah. It was delicious. I mean, Not just good, it was yeah. delicious. Seven courses, each of us having a different course each time. Yeah. Um, that was amazing. I don't know that we need to like draw this one out. Um, there's no secrets or surprises that, you know, haha, <laughs> something was bad. No, it was all great. Oh, delicious. Would I come back? Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, now, it is pricey, obviously. This is not a cheap meal. I mean, you're talking about upwards of 170, 180 per, per, per tasting menu. Yeah. Um, but if you are looking to have that big splurge meal, this is it. You should check this place out for sure. It's delicious. If you're enjoying our videos, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And follow us on social media. All of our uh, platforms are listed below Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you. Thanks. Do you want this last bite? Uh, I mean, if you don't. You are welcome. Yes. Shop. It's a good thing you can't see what's going on over here. Maybe they're fresh. Or are you thinking they're not out of a can? I think they're not out of a can. Or good. frozen. I bet you they're not frozen either. Good. Puree on top? Spinach nugget, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the cooked spinach that Popeye would want. Yep. <laughs> well, it smells like a hash brown. Eats like a hash brown? 
It's an elevated McDonald's hash brown.